The new Mortal Kombat shows off Sub-Zero's powers and seemingly nerfs Shang Tsung's, but in the lore of the series Shang Tsung is far more powerful. The new Mortal Kombat movie underplays how powerful Shang Tsung is compared to Sub-Zero. A large portion of the movie is dedicated to showing off Sub-Zero's various powers, so those unfamiliar with the game series might assume he's stronger than Shang Tsung. This, as those who have played the games know, isn't necessarily true. Mortal Kombat is based on the long-running and beloved fighting game series of the same name. In the original game and the first film adaptation, Shang Tsung served as the primary antagonist. He was a formidable force, but as the series has gone on he's become less of a central threat and more a part of the franchise's growing ensemble cast. What of Lord Raiden? If he discovers we're breaking rules set in stone by the Elder Gods. Leave the Elder Gods to me. We didn't win nine straight tournaments by following the rules. One of the standout members of this cast is Sub-Zero. The ninja with ice powers is one of the most well-known and iconic characters in all of Mortal Kombat, and his story has been given greater and greater importance as the series has progressed. This emphasis on Sub-Zero is very apparent in the new movie, as he has been a central aspect of the film's marketing campaign. Building a lot of the fight sequences around Sub-Zero's cryomancy makes him seem even more powerful than he already is, but Shang Tsung doesn't get to show off nearly as much. I will not bring fighters. I will bring armies. His soul-sucking power is seen, which still establishes him as a formidable force, but none of his other powers from the games make an appearance. At the very least it could have been expected for him to use his shape-shifting ability, but the soul-sucking is still the main power Shang Tsung uses. The suggestion appears to be that Sub-Zero is more powerful, but the reality is that he is in Shang Tsung's servitude for a reason, and the real main villain is hiding how powerful he is if the game's lore is being adhered to fully. The lack of powers in the film means that Shang Tsung is far more powerful in the lore of the Mortal Kombat game series compared to Sub-Zero, but for this movie specifically, it can seem like Sub-Zero is the stronger and more versatile fighter. The filmmakers no doubt want to have this movie be the start of a new film franchise, so it makes sense that they wanted to design many of the most interesting fight sequences around Sub-Zero since he's such an instantly recognizable character. On top of that, he and Scorpion share a personal bond that makes Sub-Zero more of a key player in the story, and grounding it to their conflict was a smart move. Die with your family. <sighs> that, along with the fact that ice powers are a more tangible set of abilities that can be applied in a number of ways. Shang Tsung's powers are generally more abstract and might be better served being explored in a Mortal Kombat sequel. Despite this seeming depowerment, when comparing the two in wider Mortal Kombat lore, Shang Tsung is the far more powerful character. As well as his soul-sucking power, he's capable of shape-shifting flawlessly into the appearance of his victims, as well as taking on their memories and fighting styles, and he wields huge black magic capabilities. Sub-Zero might be an iconic part of the Mortal Kombat series, but Shang Tsung's powers are only beginning to be unveiled, and that potentially spells danger for Earthrealm's champions in future chapters to this franchise. That alone warrants the movie ending's drive to find more champions like Johnny Cage. Oh, no, I